Trains are very much something that the city and its inhabitants tend not to care about, you know, it's out of sight. And, you know, it's just like all the other serious infrastructure that keeps them alive. They only know about it when it doesn't work. In stormwater drains, you tend to find are built from different materials depending on where, you know, which city you're in when you're exploring them. Um, Melbourne drains, for example, you tend to have a lot of bluestone and it'll be, you know, arch-shaped. Um, Sydney's littered with lots of sandstone and so you tend to get that being used. Um, brick, you know, red clay brick is, uh, is also very widely used everywhere. I guess it was just cheap and uh, you tend to have that configured in an elliptical shape so your pipe won't actually be circular. It'll be rather like an egg standing on its pointy end uh, in cross section. Um, more modern stuff you tend to find um, is concrete, again, because it's cheap and, you know, able to be mass-produced and, you know, in huge quantities, so that's what they make a lot of drains out of. Some of the more strange drains uh, I've seen have had corrugated iron as their wall material. Um, possibly the oddest one I explored any time in the last decade was down in Melbourne, and it was made of black polyethylene. Um, and it had actually warped under a load of the dirt on top of it and that was a very difficult one to walk up because of course it's you know, very smooth plastic with biofilm on it so I was slipping all over the place when I was trying to walk up it. Are you ever um, amazed at the inadvertent aesthetic beauty I guess oh, yeah. of some of these underground places? A absolutely. Um, I think it doesn't just occur in an underground place that you can see how, okay, someone's built a tunnel and they've had to route some cables along it and then someone had to do a diversion and, you know, all of these things have accreted. In fact, there are service tunnels around that you can do that aren't telecommunications because we stay out of them. But they, you know, they've accreted layers of extra services on just because it was a nearby tunnel. And they, they really look kind of cool. You know, they look like no one's paid any attention to whether or not the light happens to come this way or that or if the walls look beautiful. It just works, right? And that's kind of cool. And in that subterranean feature by Jason DeRosso, you heard Predator. Trains come, turn the light out. Tonight, it's Sydney. And their only condition is they use pseudonyms to protect their identities. Names like Predator, Dirge, Mad Dog, and Trioxide. Now, where does this lead to? This actually joins up with the one that we were previously in. You can ultimately go all the way to Redfern and get out through Manhole, but uh, it's a long crawl and we tend to stay in the large ones just to save our backs. Those dangers include flash floods, pockets of poisonous gases, toxic waste and chemicals. You tend to get things like methane on ceilings, carbon dioxide in some, much like caves. Uh, the main sort of uh, vapours that we've encountered have been things like people, you know, dumping things illegally in the stormwater system. So what happens if someone is critically injured and could die down here in the drains? We never explore alone. Um, you know, we take spare torches in the event that they fail. We don't go in on days when it's threatening to rain. You know, just basic, straightforward common sense. And, you know, uh, it's kept us alive. Uh, I think it'll continue to do it. And meet Predator. He came down from Sydney to spend his holidays burrowing through Melbourne's underground. I explore in Sydney, there's not a great deal of really good tunnels up there, so I came down to Melbourne where there's lots. Most people would think that a little strange. A person no. would travel from Sydney to Melbourne to uh, get underground and where it's muddy and slimy and smelly and walk through <laughs> underground tunnels and drains. Ah, uh, well, I suppose they're entitled to their opinions, but I get a kick out of it. Other than Melbourne, have you travelled anywhere else in Australia? to explore drains and tunnels? Uh, no, in fact, I've not even travelled anywhere else in Australia to do anything. Do you think there are dangers? Oh, yeah, you've got to be aware of them. Um, forewarned is forearmed. Uh, we always travel in numbers, that way if any of us sort of fall down anything, well, we A, know where they are, and B, we can help them on the spot. Um, yeah, and of course, like Gilligan said earlier, uh, we don't go in the drains if it's looking like it's going to rain. It's just asking for trouble. I'm not necessarily sure that uh, the laws being broken in this case have any um, you know, harmful effect on society. Uh, you know, coming in drains, I suppose, just yeah, it's like dangerous and silly. Law. The law is a law, yes, it's true. Uh, some of them aren't necessarily machined as well as they could be. If you're really keen, you'll do it, but otherwise, no, yeah, you but won't. Don't you think it's a little irresponsible for the, for the young kids? Perhaps, but isn't smoking irresponsible? Where are you sleeping while you're here? There, on that mattress, um, in this drain.
We're above Fortress, which is a big drain in Maruba uh, on Predator. Uh, we're part of the Sydney Cave Clan, and uh, down there is a big drain that we've just been through. And the clan in Sydney's been going since the early 1990s, and we explore anything really um, drains, uh, abandoned buildings. Um, yeah, factories, old military installations, bridges, you name it. I've been going in drains for just ever since I grew up. I used to ride my BMX through stormwater channels and I was doing that one day and I found a sticker from a bunch of people in Melbourne who were um, exploring drains and they said, oh, do you want to go in drains? And I said, oh, yeah, okay, well. So I wrote to them and it turned out there was this bunch of people in Melbourne called the Cave Clan and uh, they'd been up to Sydney and they'd had a look at the drains and um, I started looking around for more of them and I've just been doing it ever since. It's about eight years or so now. The, the fine, the last time I saw a sign that had a fine on it was um, oh, about seven years ago and it was $20,000 then. I don't know what they've adjusted it for. Um, there's that sort of risk. There's there's the risks in, involved with, um, you know, sudden rainfall, which um, we generally avoid by not going down on rainy days. Um, oh, there's other things as well. There's, there's slippery sort of stuff and um, waterfalls and things, which if you are not careful, you can fall down and sort of injure yourself. It's all the usual stuff. What, what got you involved in, in doing it from the start? I used to sort of ride a BMX down stormwater canals and, you know, I was exploring the tunnels upstream of those. And one day I was in a canal and I found this sticker that said, you know, interested in tunnels and drains, right to this PO box in Melbourne. And I thought, oh, you've got to be kidding. But uh, so I wrote to them and they sent me back this list of drains in Sydney that they'd found. You know, Melbourne drain explorers had explored all the stuff in Melbourne and they come up with, you know, looking for drains in Sydney. So they have maps or... Uh, they have got, like, location lists, right? They sort of have location lists and street directory references in them and wow. yeah so you can just sort of pop down there and they give you a sheet and you go get a street directory and just hit Melbourne you know <laughs> go underground wow. um, yeah but I sort of mo moved from drains to things like bridges and rail tunnels and stuff uh, only later sort of you know mid 90s um, there's still plenty of drains to do but yeah. just a bit of variety is good you know because it'd be amazing like being mixed down with these smooth concrete bits oh, there's probably some more terrifying things you could ride down some of the really evil slides and stuff that are around well, in Sydney. You know, yeah. <laughs> to, you know, skateboard down or you know, bump slide down. I fell down a Sydney slide a number of years ago and it was perfectly smooth and it was a bit scary, but gee, it was good fun when I got the floor. And was it before you invested in the miners' torch? Yeah, I was sort of using an old dolphin back then. Okay. Uh, and I was sort of sliding down on the arse and you know, just going... <laughs> <laughs> scraping the torch along on the concrete. Wow, and what, what are some other bits of equipment that you would consider essential for, um, for, oh. for draining? Well, oh. the whole exploration type thing. I noticed no one carries ropes. Yeah, go anywhere we have to Very ride. occasionally there are drains that, you know, they've got really steep slides and waterfalls or whatever, and I'll often put a rope in there, um, you know, attach it to a step iron or something. Uh, there are some drains you might actually abseil down and, you know, you could go down rope and harness. But, you know, the great thing about drone exploring is just the minimum sort of equipment that you need to do it. Right. Um, the most important thing to take with you is your brain, you know, you don't go down uh, when it's threatening to piss down rain on you, obviously. Yeah. Um, That's you know, bad. Don't expose yourself to needless risk. Have you come across any other people whilst you've been exploring? Oh, uh, you occasionally you seem to come across, uh, you know, people in what you might term low-cost housing, i.e. abandoned buildings and stuff. Wow. Um, you know, and, and they're often sort of not particularly friendly that you sort of just walk into their home. Um, sometimes you'll just find people, you know, mainly kids exploring drains and they'll be yeah. very surprised that, you know, five or six people with lights. An organised group, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you bump into other people in drains who are a sort of little organised group. And, um, wow. There's always a, uh, a these the cops sort of moment. You yeah. see these torches coming towards you. they homies? Yeah. Well, <laughs> they've never really been a serious problem. <laughs> oh, that's cool. They don't hang out in the drains, obviously, more than the mall kind of area. It's, it's interesting to note that the homeboy graffiti only goes into a tunnel as far as the light goes. Um, there's no graph much further beyond that, so they either haven't figured out how to deal with torches or they're afraid of the dark. <laughs> so there's not a specific um, cave clan graffiti that you would be able to find if you take to the tunnels underneath Australia? Uh, yeah, you'll generally find, you know, in the remote upper reaches and near interesting features, you'll find, uh, you know, cave clan graffiti, you know, little cave clan symbol and, uh, you know, addresses of nearby post offices that might have, you know, places that you can send mail wow. to. There's, you know, post boxes in cities. And, um, yeah, that's sort of been a bit updated more recently, of course, now that the web pages are up and you can just email yes. members specifically. I've been doing this for 10 years now. No, I think the nastiest thing I ever found underground was a large amount of fast-moving air, which signified that there was a large amount of fast-moving water coming down the tunnel further upstream, so um, I left. Um, I was quite impressed uh, when I went down to Melbourne and first saw the chamber, you know, a big room, and, you know, I slept there for a couple of nights, and that's where we had the clannies in Melbourne, and it was terrific. You never know what's around the next bend. Cave Clan interviews, Cave Clan home video.
the international marketing machine. Some people climb mountains and some people drive cars fast, but we go in drains and tunnels. Stalactites all over the place, change your shape all the time, and you come out miles from where you got in. And, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Coming up and not knowing exactly where you are, and just you know, being there in a place that people rarely ever go. But unlike popular teenage Ninja Turtles, there's one place they never go. The risks are just too great. Uh, anything that involves sewerage, we just keep straight out of. Um, it would be irres irresponsible and stupid to do so. In the early days uh, of my drain exploration, um, part of it was fear and overcoming it. The first big one I did was in Beverly Hills in Sydney. It's called Sin City. It was big and you'd get in there and you'd be with your friends and you didn't even bring a torch, you just dragged your hand along the wall and hoped that you didn't fall off anything. And, and that was a kind of a teenage sort of rush. <laughs> and I just guess I never grew up. <laughs> I guess this sort of subculture is characterised by uh, an irreverence for sort of artificial barriers that are placed between you and things you want to know. Um, that sort of really, I think, underpins it. It's all really curiosity driven, I think. There's a little bit of boyhood testosterone in there as well, you know. It's good to get scared for a while and then get out of a scary situation and go, I'm, good. I'm really glad I'm out of that. Probably the best team events that I've ever been involved in have to be in the cave plan, like pulling huge manholes out of the ground, smashing them to pieces over like a number of days, working all through the night with sledgehammers to try and get into things. You get all these people coming together and suddenly we can, we can achieve something as a, as a group that they would have never been able to do before. Uh, you want to get to the end of your life and say, I've had a fucking good time doing all of this stuff. Uh, and I know a lot of weird things about some of the infrastructure that holds the city together. And at the end, okay, I probably won't have you know, all the nice stuff like the house and the superannuation and all that stuff. But um, I think it's more important to live your life rather than kind of live this other life in order to live a life when you're 60 and 70 and too old to really enjoy it.